This week's video should be pretty short and sweet. I finally got the Bermuda at a place about where I want it. So I'm gonna show y'all around the lawn so y'all can see how that's been progressing. And then I'm gonna give y'all a few tips for if you are going out of town, maybe on a business trip, maybe on a vacation, a few things that you can do in your lawn to where when you get back, it won't just be a complete disaster and you won't have to start over and kind of erase all that hard work you've been doing in the yard. So stick around for that. What's up guys, I'm Rhett. Welcome back to Lawn Insider. All right, it's now been about three and a half weeks since I verticut the lawn and scalped it down just to thin it out a little bit. And this past week, it's really started to look really good again. So we are back at 100% green up. And let me show y'all. Obviously, we've got some pretty serious shadows being cast right now. But here is a closer look at the turf itself. So the front yard is actually the last part of the lawn that I did verticut, so it actually came back the slowest. But now it's looking good, all is right in the world, and I'm gonna head over to the side yard. Here's a look at the front side yard. I'm not sure how well y'all can see this just because I know we have some pretty serious shadows right now. But those drier spots have greened up a little bit after I was able to water this week and then just with another week of growth. Unfortunately, it's still really, really hot and still really, really dry. And you can still see, I don't know if you can on film, but you can still see definitely in person kind of the faint spots of where those dry spots are, those hot spots in my lawn. So I'm just kind of praying for rain, right? And I'm praying that we don't go back onto more severe water restrictions. I don't know if that's gonna be the case, but really all we can do is hope for some good rain and some help from mother nature. But anyway, there is the back part of the side yard here. Let me give y'all a good shot here of the Great Wall of Bermuda between uh, me and my neighbor's lawn. It's crazy to see the, the height difference there. But now we're going to go ahead and head to the back. And here is the backyard. Now the backyard actually came back more quickly than the rest of the lawn because I actually verticut this spot first i started out on this half and then i did that part of the yard afterwards but it's already been looking good for a couple of weeks now uh, you can see that the color and the thickness is already looking really really nice i did put out some granular fertilizer right after i verticut haven't put anything out since so it's probably been about back here it's probably been about a month since it got hit with any sort of fertilizer, liquid or granular. I don't think I'm gonna put out any granular real soon. A few days before 4th of July, I'll probably come out and put out some liquid fert just so I can hopefully get a little pop of color, maybe mix it with some iron. But other than that, I'm not gonna hit it with a granular probably, at least for a few more weeks. I do wanna show y'all over here. I do have a very localized spot of some nut sedge in the lawn. If you've watched my videos throughout the years, you know this is the only spot I ever get nut sedge. And really it's actually when my neighbors run their sprinklers, they get some runoff that comes right here along my fence line because this is the part when it rains and stuff where the water runs off and this is actually a low spot. So this is really the only spot I get any nut sedge. So eventually I will come out and hit that with some sedge hammer, but I'm going to save that for another day. And let's get on with the rest of the video. If you've worked really hard to get your lawn looking good and you know you're going to have to take a trip out of town, there are a few steps you can take to make sure that you're not going to be starting back at square one when you get back home. And the first one is, to me, probably the most obvious one. And that's just going to be to try to get out and mow and edge your lawn either the day that you're leaving or the day before you're leaving. Basically, as close to when you're leaving as possible. That way your lawn is going to have the least amount of time to get overgrown again by the time you get back home. Got the wind picking up a little bit out here and the breeze is definitely welcome, but uh, I realize that's a really obvious step and anyone can do that step. And that's why I led with it. It's very obvious. You don't need any special equipment other than your actual lawn mower to get it done. And I'll move on to kind of the more advanced stuff as I go on. The next big step that I would recommend, and this one's really going to depend on if you have an irrigation system or not, but just make sure that the schedule, your watering schedule, your irrigation schedule is set to where it's still going to run when you're out and make sure that your lawn is still getting 
that inch of water a week, depending on how long you're gone, obviously. But in the heat that we're getting, especially right now in Texas, we have 100 plus degree days every day and we haven't had rain in quite a bit of time. So if you're experiencing real heat front like that and it's really, really dry, it is really important that we still are able to get water on our lawn. Unfortunately, that does require us to have an irrigation system because it's got to be able to run while we're not home. Maybe if you have to go out and manually water your yard, you can pay someone to do it or maybe have a family member or friend just drop by and do it if, if they really love you. But definitely it does make life a whole lot easier to have an irrigation system in that case. The last thing that I'll recommend, and this is gonna be for the people that are real lawn care nuts, like grass freaks that want to make sure if they're out of town for a little bit, that they don't come back to an overgrown yard or something, you know, a real project. And that's going to be to apply some, some product like this. Now, the one I have is called Teenex. It is a plant growth regulator. A lot of times you'll see that shortened to PGR. What PGR does, what Teenex does, is it slows down the vertical growth of your grass. So basically it gives you more time in between cuts. So your grass is going to grow more slowly. You're gonna to have to mow less often. And that's really key, because if you're not gonna be home to mow, it's really important that your grass doesn't get away from you. Because if it does, it's gonna to get too tall. You're gonna to have to come home and you're gonna have a project on your hands because you're probably gonna to have to scalp and you're gonna have a brown yard for a week or two. And that's not the worst thing in the world. I just had a brown yard for two or three weeks myself. But, you know, obviously we, we would rather always have our, our yard in tip top shape. So plant growth regulator, PGR is a great way to do that. Just a couple of tips if you do decide to get some Teenex or some plant growth regulator and make applications yourself. Since I mow my grass so short, I actually go with the, it's like quarter ounce per thousand square feet application rate. So I only put out one ounce in my four gallon backpack sprayer and that does a great job, slows down growth, probably gives me three to four times as much time in between mows as I would if I wasn't putting my grass under regulation. But another tip that you can do to apply with the Teenex is to apply a little bit of liquid iron with it. And this is a big jug that I got from Ewing Irrigation. That liquid iron is just going to prevent a little bit of the potential bronzing that you'll get with Teenex, especially if you go a little heavier with the Teenex. It tends to bronze the, the very tips of the grass blades, but that can counteract some of those effects. So that's a little tip with that. There are a few other PGRs, plant growth regulators, on the market. I know there's even a granular one that I've seen on some channels. I think it's called Slow Mo, if you wanted to go check that out as well. I use Teenex because Teenex is a cheaper, it's still a relatively expensive product, but it, especially in the gallon size. So if you go in on some Teenex, you probably want a friend or a neighbor to split it with. But Teenex is relatively inexpensive compared to some of the other products. And for me, I've definitely seen good results and it definitely allows you to go longer in between mows and really that's the, the name of the game, especially if you're gonna be out of town for a little while, but just in the heat and the, the weather that we've had in general, you don't wanna be outside all the time mowing. Eh, we, we sorta do, we sorta do to be honest, but you don't wanna always be mowing uh, and just you know sweating outside. So it does do a great job, it does what it's supposed to do, uh, and if it's something you're interested in, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below the video. All right, y'all, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up right there. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave it a like. If you're enjoying the content and you wanna continue to see more of it, hit that black subscribe button below the video. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave those in the comment section below. I'll see y'all again soon. Lawn Insider, out.